Spirit does quite tight in our county. We're a, a regional advocacy group who represents um, residents that have been impacted by the next gen changes in 2016. And then, you know, people from as far south as Carmel Valley all the way up to Palo Alto have been impacted by this. And then we have the two of you with. With, well, with Bay Area Jet Noise, um, which we co-founded with some other folks. And uh, we're, we're residents of Mountain View. Okay. And uh, we have interest in the changes that happened over us recently with respect to South Flow traffic into San Jose Airport. Um, the path was moved and tightened. Mm. Uh, and uh, that's very noticeable. Mm. And then we're, we're also concerned about the proposals that have been floated about moving traffic from um, its historic flight paths over its paths for a share of that traffic mm -hmm. over us. Okay, okay. So um, we just had this topic on um, last, last Monday. Yeah. yeah. So what part of you guys consider today? Um, you all responded. Okay. I guess the question we had was, I guess how was sending a letter to the FAA mm -hmm. or Department of Transportation sure. and they're you know, requesting that more points be introduced, more waypoints be introduced coming into the uh, into San Francisco and they asked for the same thing, but then with an appendix that kind of outlined the map of where these points are. Mm -hmm. And they are over the bay, but they're on the offshore of Mountain View where the points come. So basically where the point is in the bay, the flight path mm -hmm. is directly over Mountain View. Uh, and that was in the letter? That was in the appendix to the letter. It's in the report okay, prepared by okay. the... Um, so if you look at the report it's by the... Letter from Monday? Monday night? Yeah, so from Monday. Let me recap. Oh, okay. Let me recap. Okay. Previous letter in October 2016 by the city to the FAA asked with the same verbiage that more points be introduced, and it had an appendix in tow. And that appendix was a report prepared by Freytag and Associates mm -hmm. to the city. Okay. And that and page two, which I think is showing, okay. page two of the appendix shows what the proposed points are. This is not the whole thing, but it's all the, the most important part, which shows the well, sir, for it, so basically, this is the um, the current surface path, okay. and this is the Eddie Waypoint. So the proposal that uh, was previously thought uh, in this letter as being uh, put forth is at the Eddie Waypoint branch off, and basically you take this route to the Dumba Waypoint or the Rocky Waypoint, which is uh, way to the north side. So this is so this is what's off of the mountain. Okay. Right now, you read the verbiage; it's an alternate route. It's, it's asking to talk about sharing the traffic. The FAA said it's impossible. It just said it'd be so much better if planes would fly over Mountain View instead of Palo Alto. Well, it and doesn't say that in so many words, but that's well, the, it shows graphs. That's that what it, it kind of to. right. Yeah. And for, so, me, for me, like our concern, I'm also, I'm also from Jason from Mountain View, right? So having a waypoint map at Mountain View. I was, I was, right. So my question yeah. was, you asked why we're here. The question yeah. is, the letter that is being drafted has the same verbiage. We don't know if it's going to carry the appendix or not. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the question is, where are these points that are talked about in a very specific letter that is being sent these days, Tuesday, I believe, uh, to the FAA? What does Palo Alto think? Where are these points? Yeah, so I actually don't know. Um, but I would imagine that we would want them as far from Palo Alto as possible. I mean, Mountain View is literally like our next door neighbor. So right. having a waypoint in Mountain View doesn't sound like a really good idea either. But Mountain View is about as far away as possible from Palo Alto, given the San Jose traffic starts immediately over San Jose. So if you were to take traffic away from Palo Alto, as far away as possible, sort of down the bay, well, it would cross over Mountain View. There is a chance that you can even make it go over Sunnyvale, but that's much harder. The practical thing that will happen is Mountain View. So neighbor or not, it is as far as. Yeah. OK. And How I many flights are we talking about? Well, between 180 and 200 flights go along that path of road. Um, if if all of them just were to get right, so you're talking about this one right there. So for, yeah. for the last 30 years, uh -huh. right? Uh, let me get yeah, my bearings. Okay. Yeah. So for the last 30 years, traffic flow. Oh, yeah. This was called the Big Sur route. Okay. So and, and you got this is the Pacific. This is the end of the bay. Okay. This is where traffic would come from over in the vicinity over there, over San Jose. Okay. In 2015, 
couple of changes got introduced. We basically shifted it to this line. Okay. This affected people that live down here, okay. and our request has been to undo the 2015 changes, put it back here. However, the standby Palo Alto, as read by the letter there, also do this. When you come down, don't continue down to here and to the airport, but actually make a right, fly over Mountain View, mm -hmm. get to the bay, go to the airport. Okay. Their argument is either that they're not asking for it to move because they never said where these points are, and the letter doesn't say, only the appendix says where the points are, or that you can fly this path so much higher that it's going to be so much better. Yeah. Thing is, this detour adds less than two miles to the total track. And because the planes descend at a known rate, if you add two miles, that gives you about 500 feet extra there, extra height, no, no more. That's a very small difference. So basically it will fly over Mountain View in very similar altitude to what, let's say, the, north, the southern part of Palo Alto sees today. Mm -hmm. And that's not acceptable by them. So why would it be acceptable by Mountain View? And that's why we're concerned, and that's why we showed up at the meeting okay. on um, Thursday, what was it? Uh, Wednesday? Oh, okay. yeah. the but city council meeting. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. And, and I think uh, that, that really the main thing is, is that Palo Alto is seeking to potentially move flight paths without including the communities that are going to be yeah. impacted by it. I think that's the, the number one issue. Is, you know, it's a regional issue, so yeah. you, you have to think about Sure, you want it over the bay, but you have to think about all those communities that you're going to be flying over before you get there. And um, the Actually, old presenting it as over the bay is misleading. It already is over the bay. You can see it is over the bay, mm -hmm. but it gets there over Palo Alto, and they want it to get there over Mountain View. It is no more over the bay than it is today. Mm -hmm. It's just a misleading way to characterize it. Thank you. And, and nobody really wants to be explicit about community that they're impacted. So mm -hmm. people who are talking to you and your committee and lobbying about it are going to talk about in, in euphemism, we yeah. should make full use yeah. of the bay. Yeah. And that's fine until you think, well, how do planes get to the bay? Yeah. they, they got to be right. crossing yeah. somewhere, yeah. and how far can they cross? Well, yeah. they can cross about two miles. Actually, the, the proposed path, path is three miles south uh, along Central Expressway of where it is today. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. instead of crossing, most of the planes crossing over Page Mill, they'd be crossing over the main store. Mm -hmm. So... Um, and those, by the way, it's three miles south, but it's two miles longer. It actually works in terms of the diagonal. Those are not conflicting. So how, how should how should they how should they fly? They should. So so the concept of equitable distribution has been bandied around, and my view on that is that people have made decisions, the most important decisions of their lives, over the last thirty years about where to buy a house. They may have made the decisions wisely, they may not have made the decisions wisely, but it's a decision that they own, and the consequences of the decision are something that people need to, they can't argue, they can't argue with that. Yeah. Now, if a flight path is moved from one community to another, that's something that the people in the new community need to sign up for. Um, if, so to the extent that a flight path has impacted new people, it should be moved back. Mm -hmm. And to the extent that the yeah. distribution was inequitable in the past, let's say yeah. airplanes should be flying over the same communities and neighborhoods that they have always mm -hmm. flown over. Yeah. And if it was inequitable in the past, it should be inequitable to the same extent in the future. This is not a time to reveal the deck right. and say, okay, the last 30 years, Palo Alto has had 40% of the flights, but now going forward, we're going to have 25% of the flights, and Mountain View is going to pick up 15%. Yeah, well, I, I guess my question is that the Palo Alto, what I hear from you, I think, is that Palo Alto has a lot more flights over the city than New York. Is that true? So, or, no. let me, that's a great question. So, the number of flights hasn't changed. You mm -hmm. go on uh, Expedia and you book a flight, it's the same number of mm -hmm. flights. The flights are publicly available. Oh, maybe not flights, but the noise is louder. So, planes got question. louder. <laughs> right. Now, when you go about your everyday life, you don't notice all the flights. You notice the louder ones. Mm -hmm. Planes have gotten louder because of a mistake that was made in 2015 and caused planes to fly in a much louder way. Mm -hmm. If you look at the maps, and I should have brought more paper, but if you look at the maps of before and mm -hmm. after, the flights arriving along the surface route, which is what we're talking about here, did not get more concentrated, did not get more numerous. What they got was they got louder. This can be undone. 
focus should be on fixing the things that have that went wrong in 2015. What happened in reality when we proposed this regional push to fix as many things in 2015 as possible, we actually got pushback from the activists in Palo Alto because fixing it means keeping that waypoint Menlo where it is. And it hasn't moved. It hasn't moved in 2015. But they want to move it over or move that traffic over mm -hmm. flying into Dumba. And so when we say let's fix what went wrong, they're like, no, that ruins what 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 went wrong for it? What 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 why not? So there's a way the plane comes in to land and the plane generates noise based on a couple of things. It's the engine noise, a very significant portion, probably the most yeah. significant portion is the engine noise. There's the cleanliness of the container, whether it's flying with its door, with its flaps out, or yeah. like with the door open or the window rolled down. That makes more noise yeah. for the for the for the engine, for the car and everything else. So all these things went wrong in 2015 because the procedure that was supposed to ironically make them quieter mm. uh, conflicted with a, what's called an airspace, uh, uh, the class B airspace, mm. and caused the plane to completely uh, fly in a different descent mm. order. That made them more noisier. Okay. Which that nobody is agrees is the right thing to do. Yeah, and the FAA is like, including the, the FAA. FAA agrees they screwed up, okay. and they believe that should be undone. Okay. Uh, it was probably a rush to market. However, yeah. what's happening is basically a fight between the folks that want to fix what went wrong in 2015. And the people that say, well, it went wrong, that's an opportunity to reshuffle the mm -hmm. deck. And the people that don't believe that the deck should be reshuffled, mm -hmm. or let's put it this way, you want to have that argument? Let's have it after things get fixed. To mm -hmm. hold the fix, to hold back the fix, okay. and this whole push against no and David Gay, to hold back the fix because you're not getting your deck reshuffled, mm -hmm. because you realize there's a better chance to reshuffle the deck as long as the pain mm -hmm. remains, that's, that's not behavior mm -hmm. that's acceptable to anybody outside of that group. But all, but all that being said, there are ways to improve the issues in Palo Alto without changing long-standing flight paths. Um, you know, there's, and, and you can, you know, there was, there's the bodegas, there's, you know, Menlo that... And even regarding was, Menlo, we advocated that the entire region put basically a, a unified strong mass to raise the altitude at Menlo with no caveats or no, raise that altitude. And we couldn't get back to from Palo Alto, which is under Menlo. Mm -hmm. Because they figured that if we, we raise it at Menlo, that's not as good as shifting it to Mountain Drew, so they wouldn't support that. Mm -hmm. So what ended up was kind of a weak call, yeah, and you should also and you know, you should also raise altitude at Menlo and it won't be anywhere as effective as it could have been. That's a just a squandered opportunity that's mm -hmm. gone. Because of basically greediness. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I'd like to sort of reinforce a point that was made. In the answer screen, right? Did you have a um, yeah, we'll be ten more minutes. And then five or ten minutes. Right, okay. Reinforce a point that was made in answer to your last question about the increase in noise. Mm -hmm. In my studying of this over the last, you know, I went back to New York last year or so, um, but I got into it pretty heavily. Mm -hmm. What one of the things that surprised me is that airplane noise is is one of the least intuitive things in the universe. Mm -hmm. um, the the sound energy that's produced by the Exhaust coming from a jet engine increases with the eighth power of the speed of that exhaust. I don't know if you know if, if math is, is, is something that you still tap into, but there aren't very many things in the universe that increase with the eighth power of something else. There are technical strategies that have got that have been introduced to mitigate that to about the sixth power, but the sixth power is still a really big number. And the same thing is true with the airframe noise, which is just the, the noise that the airplane makes as, as it's disturbing the air on its path. And as airplanes deploy speed brakes and flaps and slats, those things are generate are new sources of noise on the airframe mm. that are also also increase at the sixth, fifth to sixth power. Mm. Um, so there's a lot of emphasis on altitude. Mm. Altitude is something that drops off with the second power. Mm -hmm. And what people really need to be focusing on, in, in our view, is this, the way that the planes are flying, how fast they're flying, um, whether they're using the air brakes, that sort of thing. And what was introduced in 2015 was a half-baked implementation that didn't allow the airplanes to descend in a, in a in an optimal or anywhere close to optimal manner, yeah. it forced the use of speed brakes, mm -hmm. which, which in turn forces the use of jets mm -hmm. and speed brakes and jets coming mm -hmm. in. So, that is an obvious reason that anybody who's 
gotten into this at all, sure. would say has been a major contributor to increase in noise. And we see it too. I, I live in Mountain View, but I come up to Palo Alto a lot. It's noisier up here. But the noise, I believe, is because the planes are flying different, not because there's more, more air flow. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's, that's, that's worth no noticing is that by San Francisco's own admission, the airport is pretty close to full. Mm -hmm. They can handle about 1,420 operations a day now. They say their limit is 1,500 operations a day. So it's not like, at least according to them, if you extrapolate 20 years in the future, you're going to have twice as many airplanes over Palo Alto. You, Palo Alto is pretty close. Mind you, where we live, that's a different story. San Jose Airport can double, and they will. Okay. Um, but Palo Alto is pretty pretty close to what it's what it's going to have. And I think the speaker probably also talked about the declaring, but I just looked at it. So when when the uh, airport is near capacity at the time, that means they don't actually follow the the exact line that you see here mm -hmm. drawn out. So the because the they're essentially backed up and they want to space out the planes at the operating mm -hmm. interval for the arrival. They fly a curve, typically to the left of the path, and then cross over and then to the right. So they make this sort of S curve around. And so by way of that vectoring, Mountain View already sees a lot of the traffic along this route, even though it, it doesn't currently pass over. Mm -hmm. So 50% of the traffic um, along the current route is already vectored. So we are already sharing uh, the pain. Okay. Okay, good. I think I understood. I, I had no idea. Yeah. Well, it's it is good to, yeah. to have a conversation like this. Yeah. I have one question. Have you canvassed the Red Wing Governor's new letter or the new reg? Or um, is it still on airplane? There is a there is a drive for airplanes to be quieter, but there's also a drive for airplanes to be bigger. Mm -hmm. And the bigger airplanes have more weight, and that causes more noise. Where mm -hmm. that shakes out, yeah. I don't know. Per person, they're quieter. But if you look at San Francisco, the number of people, number of employments or deployments, as they call them, increases, the number of flights doesn't. The mm -hmm. mix has larger planes in it. Larger oh. planes, the newer yeah. ones, are quieter per horsepower, per whatever you want to express. They're not necessarily but quieter. But they're still having like a 737 and a small plane like that. Right, so they will make as much noise as a 737, but carry a lot more people. Mm -hmm. So depending how you do the statistics, the number of planes remains about the same. Uh, when I get a 787 flying on board, I'm not like, oh man, that's like a submarine. <laughs> that's like a any other. There's yeah. another link, which is that the newer planes are also being optimized for fuel efficiency. Mm -hmm. And in order to optimize fuel efficiency, they fly them at a shallower angle, which means they can be a little bit lower. Slightly than lower, but it's slightly lower. It's not huge. I, w I wouldn't say that's going to be increased with all the rate. Yeah, I don't think that's going to. Like you said, the altitude and even small changes in altitude, they don't end up. Yeah, I, I think that altitude is a bit of a, I, I won't say it's a red herring because I think people are um, legitimately think that altitude is a big issue, but in it's fact, it's not. This, 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 it, it's not. Okay. The other thing that I'd like, to, I'd like to point out is the FAA has no mandate to reduce noise. Mm. So Palo Alto and uh, Santa Clara Council, uh, Council Members Committee and the Supervisors Committee and I think are pretty tight with Anna Eshoo. If, if you guys can lobby Anna <laughs> to um, work with her her colleagues in what's called the Quiet Skies Caucus, which is something like 26 congressmen okay. who I think are mostly okay. mostly have airports that are affected by next gen. And this is a national phenomenon, by the way. What you're what you're right. hearing here. What you're hearing here is being heard in cities across the country. Right. Um, Give the FAA a mandate to, to reduce noise. They right. don't have it. There's a there's a little there's a whistle, a high pitched whine that you often hear on airplanes. About thirty airplanes flying to San Francisco travel. Mm -hmm. That can be fixed by a five thousand dollar cheaper fix to the airplane mm -hmm. one time, and then it goes away. Mm -hmm. And the airplane the, the airlines have not been installing that fix yep. because they're optimizing profit, and they don't have to. Sure. A few of them a few of them are starting to consider. That's like it. one. That's a, like one first class ticket. Exactly my analogy. It's one first class ticket on one flight and yeah. they could get rid of it and it would make a huge difference. Mm. Um, so give the FAA a mandate to reduce noise. Um, we need don't, more. Don't, pass, don't bypass the FAA and an issue, which is what that letter to the DOT would have been. It would have yeah. been a blunt you know, end run. You know, mm. Okay, FAA and an issue collaborated in the select committee. We're going to write a letter bypassing that to, to, to your boss. Mm. And, you know, mm. that's not cooperating with anybody. Mm. Another thing that Palo Alto might be able to do is um, 
when the FAA was originally set up, the idea was that local communities would control noise. And then in the 1960s, there was a court case that eliminated that ability. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Basically, federal law preempts. But there, there appears to be no restriction on airports entering into business relationship with the airlines where they could have graduated landing fees. Mm -hmm. And so it would be possible if San Francisco wanted to, I believe, to uh, charge a higher fee for air, airplanes that are making louder noises, like that Airbus warning. Mm -hmm. And um, that's something that can be, that could be done, and Palo Alto may have the clout to uh, encourage that. Okay. It'd be great if Palo Alto could get on the round table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'd be great if Mountain View could get on the round so table. Airbus make it really weird noise? It, it does. Uh, uh, vocal noise. I can explain that to you, but it's, uh, it's basically a flute, and all you have to do is put a little block, uh, a little piece of metal in front of the hole, and the flute stops playing. Mm -hmm. Which I can hear it. You know, this is the 737 that you're flying, right? It's different. Yeah. yeah, and you can hear. Some people say you can hear that noise from 30, 30, 30 miles away, and it's the first thing I hear mm -hmm. when an Airbus is approaching me, mm -hmm. and it extends the period of pain mm -hmm. by maybe an extra minute. Mm -hmm. So if you can make that go away at five thousand dollars an airplane, mm -hmm. <laughs> the situation gets a lot better. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have no lever to ask the airplanes to do that because the FAA can. The one lever that we do have would be persuading SFO and SGC to apply a, a higher landing fee. And I think $25 a landing would do it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do want to refocus for a second for just we didn't come, all of this was done, was discussed there for the select committee, the FAA listened, the FAA took action. Mm -hmm. All of this was accepted. The FAA was here with good intentions mm -hmm. and took all these things to heart. Um, we are here because of the things that were not there. We're, we're here because of that push to um, move traffic from one city to another. We're here because of general, we can stop the FAA recommendations by whatever means. Mm -hmm. Several of these things got floated even in the city council meeting. Um, so the reason we're here, but you know, the region is very, very concerned about that and will not. I think the thing that you and other policy members on the council would want to be attuned to is whether or not you're hearing um, voices within the community that are suggesting that we not solve the problem in the short term so we can get a bigger that. solution in the long term. They never say that out loud. Mm -hmm. But you got to look, you gotta, you're in politics. You got to understand <laughs> what's being put mm -hmm. in so many words is not the driving of this. Mm -hmm. We've been this long enough, and this long enough that we know. The first map of this, or this is a map from the city of Palo Alto letter. The first map of this sort was actually drawn by Palo Alto residents mm -hmm. uh, from the Palo Alto Posse. Mm -hmm. However, sky if, posse. if um, mm -hmm. the Sky Posse, right. If you ask them uh, when they show up and say what their intention is, oh no, they don't want to fly over other cities. They want to fly over the bay and all that. So if you're not attuned to these things, you would go, yeah, completely harmless. Mm -hmm. But it's just that when we see the maps and we know where it's going, if you're able to peel the onion a layer, the agenda becomes a little clearer. Right. And at, at the end of the day, people being hurt are the people of Palo Alto too. Because solutions that could have been implemented are already haven't been taken up by the Great and Select Committee because of their pressure. Um, that's not good for you either. Um, okay. Yeah, so I think we yeah, yeah. yeah. So so guys, thank you so much for coming in. Really yeah, thank you for your time. Yeah. I appreciate you. Your yeah. willingness thank to you work on this. Sure. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.